This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Let's talk about a couple of tools that have been there for a while, but depending on the circumstances of the image, can be very, very, very helpful in making selections. Open up in your exercise files Magic Wand PSD. Now, when I did the series on Photoshop 5 and 5.5, I used the same image. And the reason I'm using it again is because there has been a refinement, not to how we use the tool, but how the tool interprets information. We're talking about the Magic Wand tool over here. You actually have two of them. You have a Magic Wand and a Quick Selection tool. Select the Magic Wand right now. Options on the Magic Wand, number one, there's a new one, Point Sample right here. Now, it used to be that we could go into the eyedropper tool. This is how we did it. A lot of people didn't know this. But when you're clicking with the Magic Wand tool, it's selecting one tiny point sample. We used to go into the eyedropper tool and change point sample here and then go back and use the Magic Wand tool and it would be a different point sampling. But what we can do now, which is really cool, is change it right here. I'm not usually a big fan of selecting one tiny pixel. Usually I go about three by three. If I'm going to flesh tones, I might be about five by five. It just depends on what you're trying to do. So let's go into three by three average. It gives us a little bit more of a sample. Now the tolerance number over here, see this number here, is basically how much it selects based on what you're doing. So that number can be any number from zero to 255. The brightness levels of the pixels in an image, not their color, but their brightness runs a value from 0 to 255. So brightness of a pixel is a very important aspect of the tolerance when you click and select. If I change that tolerance to, say, 0, you know anybody that's got 0 tolerance? If I come over here and click, I don't get very much. Now the reason I don't is where I clicked, the computer took a 3 by 3 average of the tolerance area and it began expanding out. When it reached the tolerance, which was zero, it stopped selecting. If I change that number, say, to 10, and do another selection about in the same area, well, I get a whole lot more because I'm increasing the tolerance. If I change that number to 255, which is maximum, and then I come over here and select, I'm going to get the whole thing because I'm saying select all ranges of tolerance. So a lot of times when you're using this tool, you're experimenting. That's too much, I should lower it. It's not enough, maybe I should raise it. So the whole idea here is you try things, you get more experience with the tool, you kind of get an idea of what to put in for tolerance. So let's make that default. Now the default's 32, right there, that's 32. You have an anti-aliasing option, which is very nice. That helps things get nice and smooth, but there are times when you only want to select in the tolerance range and not smooth it. You've got contiguous. Now, contiguous means stay within an area. So if I come back over here to the sky and click, I get a big piece. But the reason it's stopping at the pyramid is because the tolerance of the pyramid, or at least the edge of the pyramid, is exceeded by that 32. But if I turn off contiguous and try the same thing, I'm going to get pixels all over the place. Because now I'm saying go beyond the borders and just pick it up anywhere it is in the image. Most of the time you're probably using contiguous. We're going to turn that back on again. If you are working in multiple layers, you can tell the computer when you sample to sample all of the layers. I don't want it to go down into my sky layer, and that's what we're going to change the sky to. I want it to stay right on that one, so I'll leave that one off. I'm going to get right about here, tolerance of 32, go ahead and click. So I get a nice piece. If I shift click, see I don't have to really change the tolerance, the shift key adds. And if I get right about here, do that again, click right about here, come down here, and come up to here. Now if you have the lessons for CS5 and 5.5, we use the same tolerance, but we had all these unselected little sparkles all through the image. And as you can see, essentially we don't have any. It does a better job of interpreting what you want. I do like that. And now we have the selection made, what do we do with it? Well, we could press the delete key, I suppose. 
and in doing so, bring in the other sky. I'm going to press undo. I don't like deleting. Deleting is a permanent thing. We could come over here and create a layer mask, which would be the more logical way to do this. And if we come down here and create it, the problem is we're creating the mask with the selection. So that's actually kind of wrong. So let's undo that again. What we want to do, and sometimes it is so much easier to select what you don't want. And then tell the computer, okay, now that I've got this, reverse the selection for me. So we can go up to the word select on the pull down menu and go down to inverse, control shift I. I can then, with this done, click the layer mask again, and I have a selection. Now it's not what I would consider a perfect selection. We're going to talk about that in another lesson called Refine Edge, which is a very important part of this. But we have, in a sense, created this selection. Now let me go ahead and undo that, get back to here. Let's go ahead and control D which is the shortcut for get rid of the selection. Let's do this again with the second tool. Sometimes this one can really be fast for you. It's called quick selection. Now if you come over here, you'll notice that you have the ability with quick selection now to actually choose a brush size. Now what that is, it's kind of like the sampling area it's working with. You can even change the roundness of the brush if you're getting into corners and spacing, all those things just like a regular brush. But when we come back out here again into the image, I have that brush size. So I get right about there. And I just begin dragging. Now you can even let go if you want to. But every time you do it, it'll add it to it. And with one sweep around the top of the pyramid, I've got a lot of it. But you say, well, you got the cap here, part of the selection. And down here, there's just a little spot right there that looks like it needs to be kind of taken off the selection. Let's start by reducing the size of our brush. Let's make that a little smaller. And then come back over here. Now if you hold the Alt key down with this tool, it will begin unselecting areas that were part of the selection. And we very carefully paint back over like that. Down here the same thing, a very small spot. But we hold the Alt key down and we just kind of wipe into that area. Now it looks like, let me do this, let me make that bigger. Looks like we got a little bit too much this time. So we're going to come back in with that tool and not hold the Alt key down, and we can bring that back in. So you can fine tune with this tool. It's a really nice one to have. You have an auto enhance, which if the edge is not as easy to see as ours is, and that's a very easy edge, then you can turn that on and it helps find the edge. If the edge is very easy to see, it sometimes makes it a little bit too harsh. So only use it if you need it. And you do have a sample all layers option right here. Now these buttons, and you'll see them in a lot of the selection tools, this one's set automatically to add to the selection. And you can do that with the shift key. Remember when I held the alt key down? That was subtract, but you can click up here to automatically subtract without holding the alt key down. And this one is just give me one shot at it. And some of the other tools also have those options. So when you see them, that's what they mean. Now again, we've got our sky selected. We can press control shift I, which is the inversion of that selection and go right back to Great Pyramid and do the very same thing again by creating mask. Two different ways to make a selection using the magic wand tool and the magic wand's sister, Quick Selection. On to the next.